Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 6.2, leaf structure. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 6.2, you need to explain why leaves are thin and have a large surface area, identify the structures of a leaf and understand how these structures adapt leaves for photosynthesis. There's no extended supplement for this one. In our last lesson, we learned about photosynthesis, the process by which plants use light energy to produce carbohydrates. Now this mainly takes place in the chloroplasts of leaf cells, so the leaves of dicotyledonous or broad-leaved plants are specially adapted, meaning the leaf structure is perfectly suited to its role. A network of veins that branches outwards from the midrib brings water to the leaf cells and carries away any sugars produced. A broad, flat shape gives leaves a large surface area, maximising the uptake of carbon dioxide and the absorption of light. They're also very thin, which reduces the distance over which carbon dioxide must diffuse in order to reach the cells in which photosynthesis occurs. Next, you need to be able to identify the leaf structures of a dicotyledonous plant and explain how these structures adapt leaves for photosynthesis. So the epidermis is a single layer of cells that lines the upper and lower surfaces of the leaf. The upper cells do not contain chloroplasts and are transparent to allow light to reach the cells below. They also protect the plant from disease-causing pathogens and organisms and limit water loss to evaporation. The upper epidermis is covered with a waxy layer called a cuticle. It's secreted by the epidermal cells and waterproofs the leaf, limiting water loss. The lower epidermis acts as a protective layer and contains stomata, which allow the carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis and oxygen produced as a byproduct to move into and out of the leaf. Each stoma is surrounded by a pair of guard cells, which determine whether the pore is open or closed. In daylight, the leaf needs carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, so water moves into the guard cells by osmosis, causing them to change shape and the pore to open. At night time, water moves out of the guard cells, and the pore closes to reduce water loss. This of course cuts off the supply of carbon dioxide, but this isn't a problem as photosynthesis doesn't occur in the dark. The tissue between the upper and lower epidermis is called mesophyll. The upper palisade cells are long structures with a large surface area and many chloroplasts in the cytoplasm. They receive lots of light which they convert to chemical energy in the form of glucose. The spongy mesophyll cells are located just below the palisade cells. They still photosynthesize but contain fewer chloroplasts as they receive less light. They're more spherical and fit loosely together, creating air spaces within the tissue that facilitate the exchange of gases. Carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis diffuses from the air spaces and into the cells down a concentration gradient, while the oxygen released as a byproduct moves in the other direction. The air spaces of the spongy mesophyll also play an important role in the process of transpiration, which we'll cover in detail in chapter 8. Water vapour moves into the air spaces from the surrounding cells and out of the leaf through the stomata. The veins of a leaf are made of structures called vascular bundles, which consist of both xylem and phloem tissues. The interior xylem vessels transport water to the leaf for photosynthesis and mineral ions for the production of amino acids and chlorophyll, amongst other things. Phloem vessels, which are located on the outside of the bundle, carry sugars and other products like amino acids away from the leaf and to the parts of the plant that require them. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 6.2, leaf structure. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 7.1, diet.